Hello, this is the Coin and Miss Reads, and today I'm going to be reading Wings of Fire, The Lost Air by Tui T. Sutherland. So let's begin. The Dragonet Prophecy When the war has lasted twenty years, the Dragonets will come. When the land is soaked in blood and tears, the Dragonets will come. Find the seeming egg of deepest blue, wings of night shall come to you. The largest egg in mountain high will give to you the wings of sky. For wings of earth stretch through the mud, for an egg the color of dragon blood. And hidden alone from the rival queens, the sandwing egg awaits unseen. Of three queens who blister and blaze and burn, two shall die and one shall learn. If she bows to a fate that is stronger and higher, she'll have the power of wings of fire. Five eggs to hatch on brightest night, five dragons born to end the fight. Darkness will rise to bring the light. The dragonettes are coming. Prologue. Underwater, Webbs couldn't hear the screams of dying dragons. Underwater, the battle was far away as the three moons. Fire couldn't touch him. Towns couldn't scar him. The blood washed away from his claws. Underwater, he was safe. Safe and a coward. Still better than loyal, brave, and dead. Webb shuddered awake. A catfish was staring at him blankly. Its whiskery tendrils drifted in the current. The expression on his face said, Why is there a dragon sleeping on my river stones? Webb's ate it, and that made him feel a little better. The towns of peace must know what's happened to the dragonettes by now, he thought. They have spies in the Skywing Palace. They don't need to hear from me. The other towns did not need him to stand up in front of them and say, We failed. But where could he go? He was already hiding from his own tribe, the Sea Wings. Did he have to hide from the towns of peace for the rest of his life as well? Webbs paddled to the surface of the river and cautiously poked his head out. It was dark. With the claws of the Cloud Mountains, Block blocking most of the moonlight like vast shadowy teeth. He had been swimming down river for days. The Sky Kingdom was far away now. The Sky Kingdom and the five dragonettes he'd sworn to protect. Webbs dragged his long, aching body out of the water and took three steps into the forest before he noticed the dark shapes waiting for him. He spun around, but the new dragon loomed out of the river to block his escape. Black spiral patterns marked his green scales and his teeth gleamed in the moonlight. Webbs, said the other seawing in a pleasant voice, I thought he'd never wake up. Webbs drew his talons through the riverbank mud. Nautilus, he said. He hated the tremble of fear in his voice. I have important news for the talons. You don't say, said Nautilus. I suppose you got lost on your way to the usual meeting place. So we thought we'd come find you, said one of the dark figures in a voice like icicles dripping. Circus, Webbs thought. It was never a good sign when Circus the Icewing appeared. The Scowings found our cave, Webbs said, thinking. Just tell the truth, it's not your fault. Then he says, and Queen Scarlet took the dragonettes. Yes, said Nautilus dryly. We gather that much from how she's practically been standing on the tallest mountain shouting, I have the dragonettes of destiny, they're all mine. Tell us everything, Cyrus hissed. How did they find you? Well, Webb said slowly, it started when two of the dragonettes tried to run away. Maybe three, he thought. He wasn't sure where Glory had been on the night. He could only find Starlet and Sunny. But he knew she couldn't have gone into the river with Tsunami and Clay. Why would they run away? Nautilus asked sharply. What did you do to them? Webbs felt his girls flare. We kept them alive, he snarled. And trapped them underground, and changed Tsunami, and planned to kill Glory because she wasn't part of the prophecy. But what choice did we have, he thought. Surely you caught the runaways and brought them back, said a voice in the shadows. Webb recognized Crocodile, a mudwing new to the towns of peace. His hopes rose. In his few meetings with her, she'd been sympathetic. Perhaps he had one ally here. Er, Webb said, no, not exactly. They kind of came back on their own to get the others, he cleared his throat. We weren't expecting that. Castro thought they'd be long gone as soon as they hit the sky, he thought. It sounds as if they felt like prisoners, Nautilus said in a soft hiss. 
You told us to keep them underground, Rose protested. That was the decision made by all the towns. But we wanted them agreeable, not rebellious, said Nautilus. That was the entire point, wasn't it? Our murmur went around the circle of dragons. There were seven, including Nautilus, as far as Webbs could tell. He wondered if he could fight his way past seven dragons. It wasn't our fault, he muttered. Maybe there's something wrong with them. What does this have to do with the Skywings? Cyrus hissed. The Skywings followed Clay and Tsunami back to the cave, Webbs explained. That's how Queen Scarlet found us. We tried to fight back, but she killed Dune and took Hester along with the Dragonettes. Will she make them fight in her arena? asked Crocodile. Can they win? They're only Dragonettes, Cyrus growled. Of course they won't survive the arena. Surely I shall spare the Skywing at least, Crocodile said. Webbs flinched. He had never been brave enough to confess to the towns of peace that they lost their Skywing Dragonette and replaced it with a Ringwing. But now that the Dragonettes were out in the world, everyone would know soon. You know what Queen Scarlet did to all the Skywing Dragonettes you hatched on Brightest Night, Cyrus hissed. Mercy is not exactly in her nature. Webbs raised his head and looked around at the eyes that glittered in the dark. Can't we go get them? he asked. Maybe if all the talents asked, attacked at once. His voice faltered. Who is he kidding? He wasn't about to go rushing into the Skywing Palace to die. And he was closer to the Dragonettes than any of the towns, who hadn't even met them. All the Talons, Cyrus hissed. Forty dragons against the hundred Skywing Palace guards. A brilliant plan. No wonder we left the Dragonettes in your capable claws. His diamond-shaped head darted up and snapped a bat out of the air. Tiny bones crunched in his teeth. A suicide mission may not be necessary, Nautilus said. Something happened in the Skywing Palace yesterday. We don't have any clear reports yet, but one spy sp said he thought Queen Scarlet was dead. Killed by the Dragonettes. Webbs flared his wings in surprise. By my Dragonettes, he asked. Maybe they have a talent for escaping, Nautilus said. Although another spy was sure that they all died trying to fight their way out. Webb's stomach felt as if it were full of poisonous jellyfish. The Dragonettes couldn't be dead. Not after all he'd given for the sake of the prophecy. And to save my own scales, a small voice whispered inside him. If they are loose in Pyra, how do you suggest we find them? Nautilus asked. Non-suicidal suggestions only, please. Well, for us, you may feel free to kill yourself whenever it's convenient. I don't know, Webbs admitted. He had no idea where the Dragonettes might go. He didn't understand why they would want to be on their own, cut off from their protectors. The worst ten days of his life were the ones between the battle where he had abandoned his queen and the day the towns had found him, alone, with no tribe to support them and no towns to protect them. How would the Dragonettes survive? If we can't get the Dragonettes back, Nautilus mused, I suppose we'll have to consider our backup plan. He scratched his gills thoughtfully. What backup plan? Webbs asked. The one you don't get to know about, Cyrus said. But, but we have to get them back, Webbs said. They're the Dragonettes. They're the only ones who can stop the war. Have a little faith in the prophecy, Webbs, Nautilus said. Yes, don't worry, Crocodile said reassuringly. The Talents of Peace wouldn't put all their eggs in one nest. It's a good backup plan. Webbs looked from one shadowed face to the next. Apart from Crocodile, he saw nothing friendly in the eyes staring at him. I don't understand, he said. Was there another prophecy he didn't know about? Of course, Nuttall said. That means you would be a problem. Webbs barely had time to say, what? Before Cyrus was suddenly on his back, pinning him to the ground. His wounds from the Skyrim soldiers flared up with a bright new pain. One wing was twisted behind him, and he could feel the ice wing's serrated claws digging into his scales. What are you doing? Webbs yelled. I'm one of you! I've been with the Talons of Peace for seven years! And you failed us, Cyrus hissed. Now, now, Nautilus said, then paused. No, that's fair. I'm going to dig your heart out and feed it to the fish, Cyrus growled. Won't that be ironic? Webbs thought gloomily of the fish he'd just eaten. But we're the dragons for peace, he said, his teeth gritted with pain. If we kill each other, aren't we as bad as burn and blister and blaze? Sorry, Webbs, Nautilus said. 
Peace is important than any one dragon, and you would disrupt our backup plan. We're doing this for your own good, for the prophecy, for peace. Webbs heard the horrible echo of his own words, the same thing he said to the dragonettes whenever they complained about life under the mountain. It's for your own good. Peace is the most important thing. He'd believed it when he said it. No doubt, Nautilus did too. Nautilus gestured with one talon. Cyrus, rip out his heart. The jaws of the ice wing sprang open, and Cyrus flung Webbs down on his back. His icicle-sharp claws flexed, ready to tear into Webb's underbelly. Suddenly, Crocodile cannoned into him, knocking Cyrus into the undergrowth. Webbs didn't hesitate. He flipped upright and shot into the sky as fast as his wings could carry him. He heard shouts as Crocodile struck out at the dragons around her, and he felt a stab of guilt. Should he stay to help her fight? But why go back for death when he had a chance at life? He heard wingbeats wing behind him and flew harder. Excuse me. He imagined Cyrus breathing down his tail, or Nautilus hissing closer and closer. But it was Crocodile's voice who called to him. Fly, Webbs, she cried. I've knocked them out. They didn't see that coming. Ha! Huh. Thank you, Webbs called back, twisting to see her heavy brown shape soaring behind him. Where will you hide? she asked. He shook his head. I have no idea. I've heard there's a dragon in Jade Mountain who might. You should go home, she said, tilting her wings to swoop under him. From what I hear, Queen Coral is in a merciful mood these days. The thrill that ran through webs from horns to tail nearly took his breath away. Home? Back to the sea, after all these years. Is it possible? She'll never forgive me, not after everything I did, he said. It's not just that I deserted her during a battle. She must know I was the one who stole her egg for the prophecy. You might be surprised, said Crocodile. Isn't she supposed to be one of the greatest queens in history? That's what all the seeming scrolls say. Perhaps she'll forgive you. Why not take the chance, if it means you can go home again? Webbs was silent. One of the moons was rising, shimmering off his blue-green scales. From up here, he could see the ocean, far off in the distance, but it seemed as unreachable as the moon itself. Up to you, Crocodile said, begging away from him. I'm just telling you what I've heard. Good luck either way. Good luck to you too, Webbs called. She vanished into the trees, and he wondered where she would go. He missed the sea with every scale on his body. He missed the palaces, the currents, the whale songs, the feasts, the gardens, the other seedings. If the towns are done with me, if I promise her I'll be brave this time, maybe I can go home again. And that is the end of the prologue. Thank you for listening. Once again, this is Wings of Fire, The Lost Air. This is the second book of the series. Have a great day. Thank you.